MC with Dr. Mark Bennell, and he's a cardiothoracic surgeon here and is going to tell us about the latest in treatment for heart failure, a very common problem, correct? It is a very common problem. Um, heart failure is the number one problem uh, that uh, Medicare spends money on in this country to the tune of about 39 billion, with a B, billion dollars a year. Mm -hmm. Now, you are always dealing with shortages of donor organs for heart transplants, for people who, you know, mm -hmm. there's no other way to treat. What are you doing now to help those patients if they can't get a transplant heart? Well, that's a, a great point because there are close to 300,000 people in this country that die every year of heart failure. And when they've reached the limits of what medication can do for their heart failure, when they're having trouble breathing, even taking a shower, trying to put on their clothes, we have patients who, you know, by the time they put on their shirt, they can't, they have to sit down and, and try to catch their breath before they brush their teeth. Um, those patients uh, are, are should be evaluated for something called a, an LVAD or a left ventricular assist device. It's just a blood pump. Can we take a look? Sure. Okay, so, an LVAD right. is what you call it. Now, right. this is an older version of the device? Correct. So this is, this is back in time 25 years, mm -hmm. um, when, which was wonderful technology at the time, but this, I'm sure you'll remember Barney Clark, the, the dentist that was uh, implanted with the artificial heart right. back in the 80s. Similar technology to that. Uh, this was a a device that actually hung outside the body mm -hmm. like this with one of these going inside the heart, one of them going up back to the body into the aorta and it pumped blood kind of like our own heart mm -hmm. with a, a displacement pump like this. What are you using today? Today we have this device uh, which is the current uh, FDA approved device for uh, people with heart failure who whether they qualify for a heart transplant or not this can be used in those patients this section of this pump um, goes up inside the heart the whole pump is fully implantable it goes in a small muscular pocket um, that's uh, right underneath the heart this then gets sewn on to the biggest artery in the body so that the blood then comes through the pump this way back to the body and then this what we call a drive line is just a power cord and it is the only part that exits the skin about an inch or so below the ribs over here and this just plugs in kind of like you'd plug in your stereo to a little control unit and a couple of batteries. <laughs> very Star Trek, very bionic man, kind of amazing. Yes, yeah, uh, fortunately not six million dollars <laughs> but uh, um, uh, in any case, the batteries will offer patients up to 14 hours of freedom, um, and uh, their quality of life is quite good. Um, in other words, they are doing, you know, they really get back to a lot of the things they like to do in life, where it's playing in softball leagues, playing golf, playing tennis, traveling on airplanes. They can do all of those things, but all they can't do is, you know, is jump in the Maumee River and go for a swim because, you know, it's electric after all. Very quickly, um, you said you wanted to caution people that if they are having serious heart issues and you might need one of these to save, mm. extend, or improve your life, to come early rather than later? Right. Now, this is a process. Um, it takes us a while to fully evaluate the patients, their families, their support systems, um, their whole disease process, um, and to begin that process early because as heart failure, the end approaches, it can be rather unpredictable. And if patients are in reasonable shape to begin with, they have a much better chance of, of having a successful outcome. Well, thank you so. for introducing us to this. My it's pleasure. Very Mark. helpful. Thank you very much. That is Dr. Mark Bunnell at UTMC with tonight's talk back.